Do you know how RabbitMQ works under the hood and how Mass Transit is able to integrate with RabbitMQ to help you implement various messaging patterns? That's what we're going to discuss in today's video and we're going to take a deep dive into the RabbitMQ broker topology. We are going to explore what happens when you connect Mass Transit with a RabbitMQ instance and you configure your message consumers. Mass Transit is going to create the broker topology that it needs to support the messaging patterns that you put in place. So we are going to take a look at the exchanges and queues that Mass Transit creates inside of RabbitMQ. And this is a quick rundown of the topics that we are going to cover. We will talk about RabbitMQ exchanges, bindings, and queues. We're going to see how Mass Transit and RabbitMQ work together. And we are going to integrate with a stocks API to implement mock purchasing of stocks. But let's start with a quick introduction of RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is an open source message broker and it's one of the most popular message brokers out there. One of the core features of RabbitMQ is reliable message delivery, and it also has support of flexible routing of messages between producers and consumers. RabbitMQ as a distributed message broker allows you to implement the producer-consumer pattern. Producers publish messages to a queue, and consumers can subscribe to these messages and consume messages from a queue. With RabbitMQ, you can also have multiple consumers subscribed to one queue, in which case they become competing consumers as you can only process a message once. But what if you want to publish a message on the producer side and have it consumed by multiple consumers in possibly distributed applications? In that case, you need to use an exchange in RabbitMQ and you can publish a message to an exchange in the same way that you would publish a message to a queue. The difference is that RabbitMQ is going to pick up the message in the exchange and route it to the appropriate queues. So in this example, I'm publishing a message to the exchange, which is routing the message to the appropriate queues, and we have a respective consumer for each of our queues. And this allows us to publish a message from one application and have it consumed from multiple applications in a distributed system. RabbitMQ has multiple types of exchanges which determine how the message will be routed. There is a direct exchange, a fan out exchange, a topic exchange and a header exchange. I'm going to explain how they work in the practical part of this video. And now let's take a look at how we can connect the mass transit messaging library with RabbitMQ. Let me walk you through the basic setup of configuring mass transit inside of a .NET Core application and connecting it with RabbitMQ. And let's start from the NuGet packages that I needed to install to make this happen. So you will see that I only installed the Mass Transit RabbitMQ library, which is how I'm able to connect Mass Transit with the RabbitMQ message transport. So if I go back to my program file, you can see I'm enabling Mass Transit as another service in the service collection. However, I'm also passing in a delegate to configure some additional options. And the most important one is calling the using RabbitMQ method, which configures the message transport. I need to provide a URI where my RabbitMQ instance will be exposed, as well as a username and password if I want to enable security. I'm passing in all of these values from my application settings, and I'm going to show you what those values are in just a moment. I'm also calling configure endpoints to automatically configure endpoints in my RabbitMQ instance, and I'm using the kebab case endpoint name formatter, which we are going to see in action when we introduce some consumers. But I also mentioned that we are going to integrate with a stocks API, and I'm using the Alpha Vantage API, which has a free plan allowing me to get some information about individual stocks. I'm using it in my typed HTTP client called the stocks client, and this HTTP client only has one method, which allows me to get some stock prices for a given ticker. So a ticker is a unique identifier for a stock on the stock exchange. And for example, if I wanted to get some information about the Microsoft stock, I would pass in the MSFT ticker. Each publicly traded company has a respective ticker. For example, NVDA is the ticker for NVIDIA and AMD is the ticker for AMD. So this is how we can get some information about a particular company's stock price. Inside of this method, I'm going to construct a respective API endpoint for a given ticker, which I'm going to pass in as an argument. And I'm also passing in my API key, which you can get for free, although it has a daily rate limit. But if you want to test this out, I'm going to leave a link to the documentation for this API in the description of this video. And it also explains how you can get a free API key. Now we're just going to call this endpoint and deserialize this into a stock price response that we can use inside of our application. Now I'm also exposing a few API endpoints. 
there is a get endpoint to get price information for a given ticker and we also have an ability to send a purchase order request for a given stock. We're going to specify what is the ticker, what is our limit price, and how many stocks we want to buy. I'm going to store this in an in-memory database, which is just a concurrent dictionary, but I'm also going to publish a purchase order sent message. And this is what we're going to publish to RabbitMQ, and then we're going to consume it inside of the same application. Let's also take a look at the Docker Compose setup before we add our first consumer. So if I open up the Docker Compose YAML file, you can see I have two services inside. One is my API service, and another is my RabbitMQ instance. RabbitMQ is going to use the management image, which is going to allow me to log into the RabbitMQ dashboard, and we will be able to see our exchanges and queues and how we are consuming messages. I'm exposing it on the default ports. I'm setting the username and password to guest, and I'm also specifying some environment variables on my API. You can see I'm setting the RabbitMQ host, username, and password to the respective values. For the host, I want you to notice that I'm specifying the stock SKU value, which is the host name of my RabbitMQ instance. And this is how I'm able to connect to it inside of the Docker network. Now let's go back to our application and introduce a consumer for the purchase order sent message. So let's add this inside of the orders folder, and I'm going to add a new class inside, which I will call the purchase order sent consumer. I'm going to implement the iConsumer interface from Mass Transit, and let's specify the purchase order sent message. We need to implement this interface, which exposes just one method called consume. And inside of this consumer, I'm going to try to purchase a stock for the given purchase order. So let's inject the stocks client. And in the consume method, I'm going to access my in-memory database to try to find an order with the given identifier. So I will say orders DP instance, let's call the get value or default method and I can use the consume context to access the purchase order sent message, which gives me the order identifier. So if the order is null, then something went wrong, and let's just return from this consumer. Otherwise, I'm going to get the stock price response by using my stocks client to get data for a given ticker. And I have the information about this ticker from my order instance. Then I'm going to access the last price by parsing a string value which I get from my stock price response, and I'm going to access the price property, and because I don't have access to the real-time price with this API, I'm just going to use the highest price that I get back as the last price for the current stock. If the last price is less than or equal to the limit price on my order, then we're going to complete this order. So I will say order filled is true. I'm going to set the order price to the last price value, and I'm also going to publish a message. So I can use the consume context to publish another message from my consumer, and I'm going to publish an order filled message for this order identifier. Now, I'm also going to add two more consumers for the order filled message, and they won't be doing anything except logging that they consume the respective message, but I'm just doing this to show you what happens when we add multiple consumers for the same message inside of our application you will see how this is going to reflect on our RabbitMQ instance when we start the application. We also need to register all of these consumers with mass transit. So if I go back to my program file in the add mass transit method, I'm going to say configure add consumer and I will use the generic overload and I'm going to specify the purchase order send consumer. Let's also specify the other two consumers that we have. So I will say add consumer order filled consumer one and let's also say configure, add consumer, and specify order filled consumer too. So we are configuring three consumers with mass transit for the respective messages that they are handling. So now let's go ahead and start the application and test out the behavior that we have. If I open up the Swagger user interface, I will be greeted with the three API endpoints that I have configured, and let's use the first endpoint to get some information about a particular stock. So let's say that we are interested in the Microsoft stock. I'm going to specify the MSFT ticker, which uniquely identifies Microsoft on the stock exchange. So if I send this request, you will see that we get back the stock price response containing the last price for the Microsoft stock, which is $430. So let's use this information to attempt to purchase the Microsoft stock. So we know that the high price is $430. So if I specify a limit price that is above this, 
I will be able to purchase the stock. Of course, stock purchase is much more complex than this, but let's just go with the flow and implement something simple. So I'm going to specify a limit price of 431. And let's say I have a lot of money to spend and I'm going to try to purchase 1000 stocks. So if I send this request, we're going to hit the breakpoint that I set inside of Visual Studio and we're going to create a new order instance, add it to our in-memory database and publish the purchase order sent message. It's going to immediately be consumed by the purchase order sent consumer and you can see that we get the order instance. We're going to access the stock price for Microsoft and we're going to get the last price value. And if this is less than our limit price, which it is, we're going to fill the order, set the last price and publish the order filled message. This is now going to be consumed by the respective consumers for this message, which are the order filled one and two consumers. You can see they both complete and we get a response back in Swagger. It's going to contain the order identifier for this order and you can see that we see the old state for the order, which says that the order was not filled. So if I go to the orders endpoint and specify the order identifier and send this request, we will get the updated state of the order saying that it was filled and the price that we purchased the stock for was $430.4. Now let's go over to the RabbitMQ user interface and see what's going on over there. If you navigate to localhost 15,672, which is the default port, you can specify the username and password to log in to the RabbitMQ management dashboard. I'm going to open up the exchanges tab where we can see what mass transit is going to do with RabbitMQ. First of all, you will notice that we have many different exchanges, but if you take a closer look, you can see two exchanges for the messages that we are sending with mass transit, which are the purchase order sent message and the order filled message. So we will be publishing the respective message to this exchange and then the exchange is going to route the message to a respective queue. Another thing that you will see is that we have a respective exchange for our consumers. So we have the purchase order sent exchange, which matches the respective consumer name. Then we have the order filled one consumer and the order filled two consumers. So all of these are exchanges and you will notice that the exchange type is a fan out exchange, which means that it's going to route all incoming messages to any queues that are bound to this exchange. It's also a durable exchange so that we don't lose any messages. Other than the fan out exchange, you can see the other exchange types that RabbitMQ supports, the direct exchange, a topic exchange, and a headers exchange. A fan out exchange is just going to publish a respective message to the connected queues. A direct exchange is going to look at the routing key and determine if it should route the message to the connected queues or exchanges. A headers exchange is going to look at the header. A topic exchange is similar to a direct exchange. It's also going to look at the routing key. However, it's going to apply a pattern match to the respective routing key and determine if it should route the message downstream. Other than the exchanges, we also have some queues and you can see that we have three queues, the order filled consumer one, order filled consumer two, and purchase order sent queue. So these are the three queues, and you will notice that they have the same name as the exchanges that I just showed you. So let's go back to our exchanges and see how it all connects together. And let's start with the purchase order sent exchange. You can see the bindings for this exchange, which determines where this exchange is going to route messages to. And you can see that it's bound to the purchase order sent exchange, even though there's a queue with the same name. If I open up the purchase order sent exchange, you can see that it's bound to the purchase order sent queue. And this is how the messaging flow is going to look like. We're going to publish our message from the application to the purchase order sent exchange, which is going to route the message to this exchange, which is then going to route the message to the respective queue where we can finally subscribe to this message and consume it from our application. In the case of the order filled message, you will see that it's bound to two exchanges which are going to route the message to the respective queues. So if I open up the order filled consumer to exchange, you can see that it's routing the message to the respective queue with the same name. And this is how mass transit integrates with RabbitMQ to support the publish subscribe messaging pattern. If you want to learn more about building distributed applications with mass transit, then you should watch this video next. Also check out my courses, subscribe to my Patreon to get access to the source code for this video. And until next time, stay awesome.